Um, I have a video of Michael Irving that was... Shit. Fuck. Damn. Ow. That hurt. <laughs> Here we go. Damn. Fucking win. Ow. Well, good Saturday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here. Of course, Joe Boo is holding down the fort at the Red Brick House, but we got Joe Bear. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. It helps us to continue to grow here on YouTube. We are here with the last preseason game of the year. The very last preseason game of the year. This is the bubble game. This is the guys that literally are on the bubble that the team has the last chance to go ahead and decide, do we want to hold on to them? Because you've got 90 players that you have to go ahead and get down to 53. And hopefully you've got 15 more that you want to bring back that you hope that nobody else gets them. And this is the opportunity for the Cowboys, of course, to try and find some more talent to fill in some holes. Now, I'm going to kind of evaluate where I feel like we are right at this moment uh, before we go ahead and have our game today. We'll be live streaming, of course, uh, the game and, and things. Hopefully you guys will join. We'll be giving away an autographed um, Ed Too Tall Jones plaque to one of you guys out there. So hopefully you guys will tune in and we will enjoy watching this last game. The Cowboys, the much maligned Cowboys. I, I've got some real bull jiggity that I want to go over, of course, from the cow herd. Uh, that's kind of funny. Um, but the Cowboys, we have heard so much about how much the Cowboys stink, how much the Cowboys don't do a free agency, and how much they don't care, how inept they are, how they, you would literally think that the Cowboys ended up having three wins last year, that they had three wins last year, and they didn't do anything to try and improve, but they had 12. They went in overconfident overconfident playing the seventh seed. Sometimes that shit happens. There wasn't a sense of urgency in that game. The Cowboys believed their own hype. You can say what you want. You can call them chokers or whatever. I call them when you literally have guys planning the after victory party, they ain't focused on the game. They ain't focused on the game. And after being, you know, chasing the dog, of the Eagles who were running away with the number one seed and knowing that they were going to be the fifth seed at best to all of a sudden get the number two seed. You started believing the hype when you started hearing that you hadn't lost a game at home in like 16 games that, that the people out there were talking about, Oh my God, the Cowboys, they got two home playoff games. They're headed to the NFC championship game. They started believing that shit. They started believing it. And then the Achilles heels of the Dallas Cowboys reared their ugly head. Not being able to really run the football and stop the run. The lack of having linebackers. Blame the quarterback. I get it. He had two turnovers and stuff in there. You know, because he's not great like Jalen Hurts, who's got two playoff wins, that their defense held teams to seven points. It's a team effort, people. It's a team game. Granted, I can look at a game like, playoff game like the Chargers versus the Jaguars and say Trevor Lawrence got the win throwing five interceptions. Went down 27 to nothing in the first quarter. But their defense stood tall after that and only gave up another three. So do we look and say Trevor Lawrence is a great quarterback because he got the win? Do we look and say Jalen Hurts is a great quarterback because the other team only scored seven points? I guess we do because that's what people count is winning and giving all the credit to the quarterback. Be that as it may, the Cowboys in their Cowboy way have done the best that they could to fill the holes. You can sit here and say they're stupid for all of that's going on with CeeDee Lamb, the whole, you know, dragging out, not having him in there in training camp at all. Here it is. We're two weeks away from the season starting, 
and he's not here yet. It's ridiculous. But that's the Cowboys' way. Zeke Elliott signed on the 3rd of September. Yeah, after his holdout. Didn't help us any in the season. In fact, it hurt us. But you can sit here and look and say, the change in coaches and philosophy, and actually just going out and getting some linebackers and having some come back from injury between Eric Kendricks and Overshown have definitely shown, and uh, drafting uh, Marcus uh, Tafufu, that you can all of a sudden say, oh, linebackers, I forgot what those guys looked like and what they do for the team. You can look and say, Osundigazua, you know, really good defensive lineman that we brought back, a little lighter than the other guys. And you can see the progression of Mozzie Smith. And then you add some veteran presence that know the system and Lenville Joseph and Jordan Phillips. You add size like you didn't have last year. Make no mistake, we got three guys that are over 320 that we can plug in the middle to help stop the run. That's a lot of beef. Last year, we had Hankins, and we had a rookie, Mozzie, who hurt his shoulder around Thanksgiving, which stunted his growth. The running game, well, I don't know that you helped it a whole lot, but the running game, the funny thing is, is people will sit here and say, Dak sucks. But the crazy thing is, you had Dak leading the NFL in touchdown passes and one of the lower intercepted quarterbacks out there with the 14th ranked running game. They were more one-dimensional than anything else, but yet they couldn't get to him. That's a tribute to the coaching, the play calling, and the quarterback. I don't know that our running game will be worse than it was last year. I know short yardage should be better. But be that as it may, all of that is semantics right now because... It's only training camp practices. You don't really know what the teams are going to be like until really October. You're going to have some teams that come out looking flat, looking like ass, and some teams that are coming out, you're going to say they're going to be super, oh my God, they're headed for the Super Bowl. And, you know, I've seen the Arizona Cardinals start out 4 0 and proceed to lose every other game. So you just got to hold on tight. And see what happens. So I got down here this morning. I got to go to my friend's house and help him put up uh, a canopy. We'll be live streaming, like I said. So I'm going to go over there, help him put the canopy up and uh, do some other things on his house and stuff. They just moved in and things. My friend Richard, who's a Steeler fan. I'm going to get some of the insight on him about Russell Wilson and things. Says, I haven't had time to really pay attention to other teams other than the Eagles. But I heard this thing this morning because, of course, the Dak hate is always out there. But in this segment, he talks about that the Cowboys haven't drafted a first-round quarterback since Troy Aikman in the last 30 years. And then he goes to the list of the quarterbacks that the Cowboys have drafted since Troy Aikman and says it's time to draft a quarterback. But I'm sitting here thinking in my mind, there's a lot of teams out there that are drafting quarterbacks. They don't have anywhere near, haven't had anywhere near the quarterback success that the Cowboys have had over almost the last, what, 19 years between Tony Romo and Dak Prescott? So, quarterback is our problem in your mind. Because I can sit here and say the Bears have drafted quarterbacks, first round quarterbacks, I believe six, and have yet to get a 4,000 yard passer. I can say the Browns have drafted like five recently. And you look at it and say they don't have anybody who's been on the level of Romo or Dak in that mix. I can talk about the Jets that have drafted seven just since 2000. I, just listen, look at this. So the Jets, man, you talk about a wasteland. You can go Chad Pennington, first rounder, Brooks Bellinger, 2003, Kellen Moore, I'm sorry, Kellen Clemens, 2006, Mark Sanchez, the Sanchez, the butt fumble, 2009, Geno Smith, 
2013. Sam Darnold. Zach Wilson. So, they still, and now, of course, they traded for Aaron Rodgers, which is a short-term thing, and we don't know if he'll even hold up. This is one of the craziest things that I've heard in a while. It's an unsolved, unbelievable ineptitude on account of the Dallas Cowboys. And so we're talking about the Cowboys in the morning meeting. And out of the blue... Of course you're talking about the Cowboys in the morning meeting. I had meeting. never heard. And when you hear this, it's one of these like knock your socks off moments. Like, whoa, whoa, are are you sitting down? Folks, the last time the Dallas Cowboys drafted a quarterback in the first round, 35 years ago, Troy Aikman first overall. 35 years. That is absolutely staggering. And in what is an offensive league by far where a quarterback's the most valuable position you know, the face of the franchise, the most important position in sports. The Dallas Cowboys have just, you know, not prioritized drafting quarterbacks in the first round. And we've got a list, unbelievable, of the quarterbacks that Dallas has drafted since Aikman. This is it. This is the list. Folks, at what point does the Dallas media start to hold Jerry Jones's feet to the fire? Bill Musgrave. The immortal Isaiah Stanbeck, who was converted to a wide receiver and caught a few passes. Um, You see Dak Prescott in 2016. But even look, as Dak was having injuries and aging, look at that. You got the last quarterback the Cowboys drafted was Ben Gucci DiNucci. Great nickname. Seventh round, 2020. Okay. Jerry, this is it. This is all you've done at quarterback since Troy Aikman. And now, lo and behold, you're em- embroiled in an ugly mess with Dak Prescott, who wants $55, $60 million. Okay? Far be it from me to criticize someone who has, you know, won three Super Bowls in the Hall of Fame. But, Jerry, what on earth are you doing? What kind of uh, program building is this? Well, I-, I just don't understand what we're doing. I need the fans to understand Dak's under contract. Yeah, <laughs> good luck. Dak was a runner-up for MVP award last year. Cowboys have won 12 games each of the last three years, and here is uh, Jerry and Dak squabbling. Now, the smart organizations, Jerry, take notes here, you know, they're always drafting quarterbacks. The Green Bay Packers had Brett Favre spend a first-round pick on Aaron Rodgers. Worked out pretty damn good. Packers also had Aaron Rodgers. They said, you know, let's go take a flyer on this guy, Jordan Love, in the first round. That also... So far, early returns are, nice job, Green Bay. Way to be forward-thinking. They had their squabble with Rodgers. They had their squabble with Favre. But they had a plan in place. Jerry doesn't have a plan. Look at the 49ers. I mean, I can agree that that he has a point there about having a plan in place. But let me point out something here. Because, you know, you say a lot of organizations are drafting quarterbacks on a regular, which which makes sense. Here is a post, a Reddit post right here. Okay, that there are at least a 78% chance that a first round quarterback will be a bust. Let's let me say that again. A 78% chance that a first round quarterback will be a bust. And you can go through and start thinking about again when teams like the Cleveland Browns, you know, go through and they're constantly drafting quarterback. You can think about the Washington Commanders now who have gotten three three since rg3 and that doesn't count you know the other ones that they had i can think the commanders have had like six or seven first round ones and haven't found one that's good yet you can think about the arizona cardinals that drafted josh rosen and then kyler murray the very next year and i'll look around and i'll say they're not in the situation where the cowboys are now you know if we're honestly saying you know take a chance on a first round quarterback at the moment, you could look and say, well, are we better off drafting another quarterback in the first round or d- developing Trey Lance? Because you're really in about the same spot. Granted, you're going to have to get another contract with Trey Lance, but at least you have him here, you've seen him, and so on. Or it may be, if you're moving on with Dak Prescott, 
If you're moving on with Dak Prescott, then you're probably moving on on a coach, in which case your new coach will want to have one, and then in which case you will probably be in the position to want to draft one. Now, let me go a little deeper on this, because I didn't listen to the whole thing, because I, I didn't want my brain to turn to mush. 49ers go to the Super Bowl with Jimmy Garoppolo, lead the Chiefs in the fourth quarter. They, blow they didn't the draft Jimmy G. They lose, and 14 months later, they draft Trey Lance. They trade up for Trey Lance. Can you say that that was, after getting was a smart Lance, thing? They're not done. The Niners went. So your philosophy is you've got to draft a quarterback in the first round, and you've just shown because he worked out so well. You used three number ones to trade up for Trey Lance, and you acted like that was a success. The reason why you go ahead and draft another quarterback is because you don't have one. It took Brock Purdy the following year after Trey Lance in the, in the seventh, seventh round. round. They're constantly picking. Jerry, oh, we're good. We got Dak. He's really resting on his laurels. The dude is, he's a blind man walking around without a cane. That's how desperate Dak and the Cowboys are right now, watching their owner flail around. Listen, Jerry, I, I think you have no choice at this point but to walk away from Dak Prescott. And I know that's going to be a bitter pill to swallow. We keep we hearing that Dave all the Hellman time. yesterday talking about how unprecedented this situation is in Dallas. It is. It's unprecedented for your franchise quarterback to not have a deal and also have the leverage to leave if he wants to. And I think that is what people need to remember. This is different because Dak Prescott has a no tag clause. He's got a no trade clause. The Cowboys can't keep him there if they if they don't sign him. So when this season gets going, we I think we would all agree it's, it's very rare to see a deal get done in season. So what? We're two weeks out from the start of the season, and if Dak doesn't have a deal, you can go ahead and assume he's going to hit free agency in March at the age of 31 with an all-pro to his name, and, and I just think it's going to be a, a free agent market lit that we've rarely seen before. I slightly disagree on this robust market that Dave and others have talked about, but that's, okay. that's a story for uh, okay. later this season. I just want to remind Cowboys that two things are true. Dak Prescott can be, I believe he is, a top 10 quarterback in the league. Right? Can that's, be. That's Runner-up MVP. My belief. I think he's a top I think that's 10. True. Come on, man. I also believe you cannot contend for a Super Bowl paying Dak Prescott north of $50, $55 million a year. I just, I, that's not possible from a so, team building so standpoint. That means so Jerry Jones really has himself in a bind here by not drafting quarterbacks. I mean, think about Shut it. Shut the fuck up. Shut all the way the fuck up until you reach the top uh, of Shut Fuck Mountain where there are no more fuck ups to shut. Okay, so then we're talking about Cincinnati can't. Right, because they got a guy at fifty-five. And we're talking about then the Jags can't because, of course, they got a guy at fifty-five. We're talking about the Lions who have a guy at fifty-four. We're talking about the Eagles that have a guy that's at fifty-one. Okay, um, let's see. We've got uh, the Jets. So isn't Aaron Rodgers like fifty? Uh, we got Lamar Jackson who's like fifty-one. So all these teams that have a guy who is fifty million dollars, then you can cancel those out because they don't have a chance. Miami, of course. Right. And, and Green Bay, Green Bay just got a guy that's up there, too. So we're saying that none of these teams that are all bunched in that same group, a team that ends up having one of the best wide receivers, one of the best edge rushers out there, the, the two best kickers, it looks like that they can't create and find players like they have a team that literally looks like they got two starters with one draft pick. They don't have any chance. They have a less of a chance than all these other teams that went through and spent big money on the quarterback. Do I have that right? That the Dallas Cowboys that had a quarterback who threw for 36 TDs with nine interceptions with basically one really good wide receiver without a great running game as opposed to a team like the Eagles that have multiple weapons, better one and two wide receivers than the Cowboys, you know, a, a tight end that's thought highly of, a much better offensive line than the Cowboys had, a better running game than the Cowboys had, who only had 23 TD passes with 15 interceptions, that's got a quarterback that's at 51, that they 
do have one because they drafted a couple of quarterbacks in the first round? How stupid is that? We sitting here listening to idiots. Not 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 real commentators. We sitting here listening to idiots. All right, good people. I'm out of here. Peace. There's this guy down here. He's got a, a cowboy's boot. No, no, no. What's going on with that? That, that thing. Folks here, as always, I want to thank See. you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report.